Okay, thank you, Thomas, for the presentation. Thank you all for attending the um, the presentation of the, this morning. And yes, today we are going to show you how to implement REST services with the Research Space um, platform. First of all, I want to give you an overview of what we are presenting today. Um, yes, we are going uh, to show you another instance of, of Research Space, uh, which is a yes, a fork of MetaFacts that you uh, saw the last days. And um, for doing that, we place ourselves outside from RDS, uh, meaning that we know uh, its facade, meaning that we know the rest and uh, what the uh, rest endpoint expects and returns. So our intention today is to show you the steps that we have followed in order to set up a new instance of research phase, the first step, then uh, to um, show you how we um, implemented the app um, that is able to pull the data from the SARI RDS REST endpoint. Um, our aim is to give you uh, an exhaustive pipeline uh, passing through these three passages. The first one, as I already mentioned, the setup of research space. The second one is to um, understand and analyzing the request in order to create, to create the configuration. And the last step is um, the app configuration that will be taken by Remo later. Okay, so let's dive in to the first uh, part, which is the, set, the setup of research space. Um, the first step, so is to download and execute, and execute research space. Um, there are two ways to do that. The first one is to uh, do that during the, um, using the development mode, which is not interesting for us right now. But what we are going to show you is to use the um, Docker instance. So uh, the um, researchers, uh, the research space uh, team provides uh, as a GitHub repository this one called Research Space Docker Compose. I will show you. I will link. Uh, I will post the link in the chat uh, after. And using this, um, we are going to find a predefined set of um, predefined set of files and commands to download and run the Docker uh, the Docker containing container that have the, that has all the um images that we need for the um for running the the instance uh among the various solution we found uh this one which is called basic uh that pull in that pulls in uh research space blaze graph and digilib uh with this file when these files are downloaded the only remaining things to do is to run the docker compose um command and uh, automatically, uh, the system automatically downloads the, all the images, and uh, we are basically good to go. Uh, the rest of space uh, instance is running, and we can go to the port uh, to localhost with the port ten two one four. And the result is the uh, is on the right side, the right side of the of the slide. Okay, the second step is to, the other step is to create the, the research space app. Um, we, in, in the other days, we already saw the app structure um, that has been already briefly described, focusing on templates. Uh, today, we'll be, we'll be, we will be focusing on the configuration files. All the files that we can find in the config um, um, di directory here on the right. Um, at this point, having the running instance of research space, and um, we, we just need to find the information to create um, uh, the configuration files, basically. And uh, for doing that, we need to analyze the request. OK, here we have um, an example of a request. Uh, for this purpose, we are showing an image uh, of this desktop application called Postman, uh, but actually we can do we, we can do the same with um, also with other softwares, for instance, Curl, for example. Uh, the idea here, here is to analyze the request and understand what is happening beneath. This can be done. Uh, how this can be done? 
And for doing that, we need to answer two questions. The first one is how to call the REST service. And the second one is how to configure the body and the response. The first, nada, uh, the first data that we need uh, are the HTTP method that I have uh, highlighted here on the, on the um, left, which is the POST method for this uh, instance of the, um, for, for this instance and uh, the URL. Also, we need all the information of the HTTP method, for instance, uh, what kind of um, input the endpoint expect and what kind of input uh, the endpoint returns. When we have this information, we can go to the next one, which is the configuration of the body and the configuration of the response. In the same way, um, we have to answer this question. Uh, basically, uh, right now is about the content and um, we need to understand that the input must be a JSON file, a JSON object uh, containing uh, the ID of a query, in this case, Q0. And um, associated with this key, we have uh, another JSON object query with the, um, uh, containing uh, many, uh, basically many uh, keys and values. Query uh, with, with a string, the type and the limit. And on the other side, we have uh, the response. Basically, uh, the response of the query also with Q0. And it's very important to see that we have result as, a, as an array, as an array of JSON object. Each uh, object, each result basically contains ID, name, and any and other uh, information that we need. So we have um, uh, found the information for the two um, for the two questions basically: how to call the REST service and how to configure the body and the response. This information will be injected in the app in the configuration files starting from here. And now we give, I will give the floor to Remo that will show you um, how this um, information that we, and we grasp from the, um, from the, uh, the, from the um, request basically uh, are injected inside the app. Okay, uh, thanks Sir Marco. Can you hear me properly? Okay. So now it's the moment to, to fill the app structure, as Gianmarco said, uh, uh, that we have set up with the, all the configuration needed. So of course, uh, all the files will be uh, available for you. Uh, so we have just uh, maybe sent a link into the conference chat, which provides a... Uh, I think we lost the audio of Remo. Okay. Oh, we're working with the edge. Uh, let's try with the... We lost the audio, yeah. We're... Yeah, yeah, also his... Um... Okay. Uh, second, we're working on the on the issue. Okay, he lost the connection. Uh, come here. Let's use my. Okay. And so somehow my computer has decided to, um, to 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 block the connection. Um, can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes. Perfect. Thank you very much. Um, so we were, where were we? So configuring the service. Yeah. And so we were saying that now that we have the, the correct folder structure, uh, we can start configuring the repository file and that the uh, configuration is simple. So we have mainly two parts. 
First, we need to specify a prefix for ephedra, as seen on the top. And uh, we are going to use uh, that prefix some lines later. And then uh, we need to specify all the information for our API call. So the endpoint and the request data. As you can see, we put the SARI endpoint URL in the service uh, URL property, and then all the request data. So the method, which is in our case, uh, post and the header. Uh, specifications like application JSON, et cetera. So once this, the, the, the repository is ready, we need one last file for our configuration, which is the service file. What is it for? Um, to simplify very, very roughly, uh, what we need is a configuration file that allows us to go um, from this to this. So we need some sort of conversion from uh, the JSON structure of the request into the same structure, but um, defined in Sparkle. So in order for our templates to, to be able to speak in Sparkle. So note how the parameters are the same. We have query type and limit. Um, and the same goes, of course, with the uh, response. So from the Sari RDS endpoint, um, we need to find a way to let uh, our research space instance know how to map that particular nested uh, JSON structure uh, you see on the left to a Sparkle query. Let's see how uh, we could do this. Um, we start writing that uh, service file and the file I'm referring to is the one um, you, you have on the right is called sorry RDS underscore descriptor dot TTL and it's located under the the services folder. In this part of the configuration, so the first part, uh, we are just going to define an ephedra service uh, with a sparkle pattern using the ephedra has sparkle pattern predicate that you see on the top. So this pattern basically defines the input and the output Sparkle variables that we are going to expect. So both for the request, and so you can see a query uh, type and limit, and um, that are highlighted in uh, yellow, greenish. And for the response, uh, type, ID, and name, and description that you can see highlighted in, uh, in, in, uh, in blue. Second part of the file, we teach the system how to build um, the JSON body request with its particular structure. Note, for example, that each key goes under a Q0. In fact, as we know, as we already said, our SARI RDS endpoint could virtually be used with uh, many queries simultaneously in, in the same request. So Q0, Q1, Q2, and so on and so on. But um, then we would receive, of course, many responses. Uh, but for our simple implementation, let's just stick to, uh, to, to one query per request. The input JSON path property defines how to locate that information inside the request JSON body uh, following the JSON path syntax. So um, you can also comment the keys in each constraint and describe you know, the, 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 the value type. And then finally, likewise, we can tell the system how to map the information from the response to. So for example, to get the type, it's the same thing with, with the uh, JSON path syntax. Uh, we go from the root, which is the dollar sign in the JSON path syntax, a type, we get the first element in the array, and then we get the ID. On the right, you can see that the structure is just uh, structures, structure that, as that. And then we are done with the uh, service file. So um, last slide, let's try to implement the service that we have defined into a, a, template, a template page. First, it is fundamental that we create a semantic context. This is important. And, and this way, in fact, we tell the search component to point to the repository that we have defined earlier. Uh, for our service. Then we specify a Sparkle query under the uh, query attribute um, as a normal Sparkle query where each field with the uh, RDS namespace is one we have uh, just defined uh, with the uh, descriptor file. 
And finally, in the template attribute, we render the output of our query with all the information with um, double curly braces for our variables. And uh, now I give the floor again to Gianmarco to give uh, maybe a little demonstration uh, of the results. Thank you very much. Okay. Let me change the sharing. Um, okay. Can you see my screen now? Okay. Um, move that to the other page. Okay, so um, yes, I wanted to give you a really, um, uh, de really short demo on how to uh, use, for instance, um, the uh, app that we have created following the steps that is here. That uh, in this case also I will share on the on the on the chat, which is. Uh, somewhere here, here, okay. Okay, so um, as, I, as I said, um, we can just download the, we just load here the, uh, the repository. Let's decompress the, the repository. This repository is the one containing the uh, information for uh, running the uh, instance, the resource space instance with all the information for uh, the Docker file and etc. So let me go to the desktop. The folder that we have decompressed, the resource space Docker compose master. Inside we have uh, various configurations. Let's go to the basic one, which is the one that we have used. What we have inside the Docker compose file. So let's run it. Marco, I think the screen is frozen. Let's go to the localhost. Okay. Let me log in with the default username and password. Here we are. We This is the um, um, new scratch um, instance. Uh, okay, that's because I already have when, when the screen has frozen. Anyway, uh, the thing that we can do is to download this app from the um, from GitHub, download it here as a zip file. And this is good to go. We can go here on the uh, app and storage, uh, app and storage location from the administration page from here, here. <clears throat> app and storages, and we can go, uh, we can click on the upload and deploy app, moving the uh, zip file, which is already good to go. We need to restart it. It's working. It's gonna take some time. Okay. Here we are. Default is a name and password again. Okay. So we can see that we have uh, an installed app which is called Sari RDS REST Lookup main. We can go and see the repositories. We have a repository called Sari RDS with a service URL, all the information that we already saw uh, the, uh, that Remo um, explained to us, the input method and et cetera. And uh, the template, looking for the, for the template which is a standard template with, that we call the RDS example in the source app called Sari SDS REST Lookup main. And let's try a simple implementation of the REST um, 
endpoint uh, Leonardo da Vinci, hit the search button, and now we have called the uh, Sari REST endpoint. Of course, uh, when you have this, uh, this app, you can uh, also tweak the, um, you can also tweak the, um, uh, the request. For instance, you can uh, fork this repository, you can duplicate this repository, change the HTTP method, for instance, for the get, and uh, change uh, following the same, um, um, the same path that we have shown before. You can change, for instance, the HTTP method and uh, as, a, as a get and pass uh, what we have uh, for, for the input basically inside a query string in the URL and uh, basically the system underneath, uh, it's, it's working. And uh, as soon as you have uh, an instance of research space, you can download the app, the Sari RDS Press Lookup app, and you have the, uh, the basic post um, uh, request, basically. So that's it.